not 100% sure what this is gonna be like. So why don't we try doing that? Are you guys ready for a new steering kit for the JL and JT that's not gonna break the bank? Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, it's Bubba with Exodus 4x4 and we build badass 4x4s. Well today, we got a customer in with a brand new Gladiator and he's looking for more power for his power steering. But he doesn't want to buy something that breaks the bank, say like a PSC kit, which can, after installation, cost upwards of almost $5,000. So instead, today we're going to be installing this Apex Steering Boost Kit, which is specifically for the JL and JT electronic power steering. Essentially what it's going to be doing is we're going to boost up that pressure on his power steering pump so that he can get more power into his steering. He's already got a Redneck Ram Hydraulic Steering Assist Kit, so this can only make things better. Right now, you're looking at about 900 PSI on your stock electronic power steering pump. By the time we're done with this, we're going to boost that up to 2,000 PSI, which should make the handling a lot better, especially off-road. So let's go get started. Before we do the install, let's take it for a quick test drive just to get a feel for the steering before we do the installation. That way we kind of know what it feels like and hopefully we'll see some increase in steering performance afterwards so let's go 40 inch toyo open country mts spicer ud60 axles it does have a redneck ram kit which helps a lot but what i've noticed from running that kit myself without any assistance whatsoever and still using the electronic power steering pump when i'm off road it's still a little bit sluggish it helps it's better with the redneck ram but it still isn't as good as say like a psc a steering kit where we've replaced the electronic power steering pump with a manual power steering pump or belt driven pump where it seems like we have more pressure so by adding the steering boost kit we'll actually up the pressure on that pump and hopefully get more performance out of the ram than what we have now Driving it around right now, it doesn't seem that bad at all. I just want to get a feel for how does it drive right now on the street? What kind of feedback am I getting without the boost kit? And compare that to after. Because in reality, over 95% of the time we own them, we drive them on the highway, right? Unless this is strictly a trail rig for you. This is what you want to feel. You want to know what it feels like when you're driving it every day. And when you go off road, that matters, right? But we don't want to make any uh, modifications to our vehicles. That's going to have an adverse effect on the daily driving aspect of it. So I just want to get a good feel for what this vehicle feels like before we install it. Now, one of the tests that you can do, since we don't have any rocks or anything right now, is find a curb and put the wheel up against it. All right, the tire, not the wheel, the tire. And then we want to try and turn and kind of push away from that curb with the vehicle. With a PSC kit and a Ram, that's always felt like that, that's doable. So I want to see if we can do the same thing before and after. I and mean, I'm pretty sure we can't do it before, but I'm hoping we can do it after. Now, since I don't have a curb anywhere, I'm going to put it up against uh, Ryan's tire on his Jeep. And then I'm going to demonstrate how far I can go without the boost kit. So let's uh, let's start turning and see where it stops. And as you can see, that's about as far as I can go right now. I can't go any more than that. Hopefully, with the installation of the boost kit, we can get enough pressure in there to get more turning out of it than just that. The installation complete kind of showed you some stuff here with the gauge and how the steering is responding to it let's go for a test drive and see how it feels now versus how it was before so far i don't really notice anything different 
as I'm driving along, which is a good thing because I want it to stay like I want a good stock feel when I'm driving down the road. I don't want to feel flighty. I don't want to feel hyper. Actually, it may even feel a little bit stiffer than it did this morning. I'm not sure. But overall, it feels good. I don't feel anything like weird about it. Yeah, so far so good. It drives just like it did before. Now, in their instructions, they say that this is really helps the 39 inch tire. Well, these are 40s. So I'm not 100% sure what this is going to be like. So let's try it. So basically, this is how we set it up earlier. Where we've got this 40 up against that 40, and let's see if it could push off of it. But it might have gained some, but not all. To be fair. Uh, to be fair. To be fair. Well, to be fair. I don't really know if the PSC kit would do that. I guess we could get my truck and put it over here and put it up against it. We can see how much difference that makes. Why don't we try doing that? It's actually not much different from what the PSC kit does, which I'm, I'm really surprised. For whatever reason, I thought that the PSC kit with a conventional pulley belt driven pump actually would put out more pressure, give us a little bit more push off than that. But it doesn't look like it has any more push off than the Apex kit provided. So all in all, I guess really when it comes down to it is the slightest bit of movement forward or backwards really helps a lot with these kits. So static, push off in a situation like this isn't really going to produce as much as what we kind of hope it would but if you're off road and you're moving through the rocks on a trail you get a lot more push off than you do here so i'm going to swing the truck back around you're not going to see hardly anything to do with this kit after it's been installed well they give you an option you can either leave the gauge on there or you can plug the hose with a plug on the end of it but for the video purposes we left the gauge on there so you can kind of see how it's working. As I mentioned before, we're going from about 900 PSI up to 2000. You can go more than that. However, as you can imagine, it's gonna be detrimental to the lifespan of the electronic power steering pump. So they really recommend that you stay within 2000 PSI and no more. And if you get up here and look, you can see on the gauge, it actually gives you a little green zone where you're gonna be about 2000 and then yellow and then red. Obviously, when you get into red, that means you're gonna experience some problems down the road, probably. Right now, without doing anything to it, zero pressure on it, I'm gonna tell Ryan to turn it all the way to the passenger and kind of hold it, just like you would if you're like in the rocks and you're trying to get after it. And you can actually watch the pressure increase and max out where Apex recommends it. I'm gonna let the camera get up in there and then I'm gonna tell Ryan to go. And that is maxed out. Now, hold it all the way passenger. There you go. So as we're sitting there holding up against a rock or just in traffic sitting there holding it, you can kind of watch that pressure fluctuate a little bit, but we're staying in that green zone and that's gonna be safe for that pump. After test driving it, I could tell a little bit more rigidness to the steering. We did the tire test, but we really don't have a good bearing on this until we go out and do some off-roading. Overall, I think for the price, this is a really good upgrade. Is it the same as that PSC pump with that conventional pulley belt driven pump that's probably putting out more pressure than this? No, I don't think it is, but it also didn't cost as much either. So that's kind of what we're shooting for. Well, that wraps it up for the Apex steering boost kit for the JLN JT. Remember guys, this isn't for JKs or TJs or anything else. It's just for the new platform. For more videos on off-roading and badass builds, check out these videos.